بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ألهمنا مراشد أمورنا وأعذنا من شرور أنفسنا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many a time spoke of the people of the past. And it would be one sentence that if it happened in the past, it's going to happen in this ummah. Sometimes it would be in the negative, that he would speak about evil that happened in the past. He wouldn't give a few examples, but in that examples he opened it all up. Like. He said, whatever happened in the past, the worst of the worst, Someone in my ummah will come and they'll do the same thing. Recent on this recent trip for Umrah, one thing that we noticed, that the fadl of Allah, tawarukala, the haram is unique. And no matter what evil happens around the world and how close it tries to come to the haram, but the haram keeps its the touch. You can't see evil by the haram. One thing we did notice is that because now there's no law for women to move with the mahram, so there are many women, girls who are coming for Umrah. So sometimes in the airport you will see a lot of chairs are occupied by females. But there's no male. So at the present moment it's still okay, they all got together, they said let's go for Umrah. But because the door has been opened, the devil will definitely find the chance that one girl goes for Umrah alone. And a boy goes for Umrah alone. And they say that we will meet up there. At a place where you would never have thought. In the time when Islam came amongst the Arabs. Then Sahaba radiallahu anhum when they went now for the Umrah. They were not happy to make this what we call Sa'i. Safa to Marwa, Marwa to Safa. The reason is because. Many, many, many years ago. Right by the Haram. A girl and a boy, they engaged in the filthiest of act right there at the haram. Allah Tabarukala as a punishment made them both become stone. So when the people came in the morning, they found two stones. That was the punishment that was given to the one who engaged in filth right by the Kaaba. So as a warning to the people, they took one stone and they put it up by Safa. And they put one stone by Marwa. So that everyone who will come will get the message that don't you dare mess with the haram of Allah. That if you want to do your evil, don't do it here. Then time passed. And how the devil works, a time came where people began worshipping that stone and the stone. They forgot what really had happened. So when they were reaching Safa, they found a stone, an idol on Safa. He said, you must be full of barakah. Now they were putting their hands on that stone. And then they're running to Marwa and they're putting their hands there because why are you on Marwa? Like? When Islam came, Sahaba radiallahu anhum said that these are two idols. People would go running between Safa to go touch Marwa, the stone. Now they would run here to touch the stone. We don't want it. So then Allah Taala revealed inna safa wal marwa that it got nothing to do with the stones. The safa and marwa itself is from the signs of Allah. But those sto two stones were once upon a time two individuals who engaged in the filthiest of acts right by the haram. When I looked at that scene where there were so many girls, Allah saved the, the people of this ummah. But if you find some of the hotels, the hotels have been so built so close to the haram. And especially if you get a suite that overlooks the Kaaba. That when you're in your bedroom, there's no barrier between you and the Kaaba. You're in the haram. Some of those hotels are such that musalla touches the musalla of the haram. So they perform the salah. You're in the haram. And I just thought about what will be that individual's condition who will tell his cousin, his friend, let's meet there. And they will book one of those high suites and where millions are making tawaf around the Kaaba. 
Then they won't even have that feeling, let's close the curtain at least, in front of the Kaaba. But Allah, the Rasul of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said what people did in the past, someone in my ummah will come, they'll do the same thing also. So in evil, this ummah will see masters also. They will leave no stone unturned in trying to do what someone done before. Allah save us all from that. Then on the other side, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always speak about unique people of the past. Unique. And then he would make indication that if Allah allowed it in the past, he will definitely make it in this ummah. He would speak, he would say if someone in the past would get hadas, like hadas means a very strong ilham, inspiration. Then he said in my ummah, he said Umar is one, he's going to get it. But meaning many will get in my ummah. He would speak about people who did amazing feats in the past. Sahaba radiallahu would get amazed. And then he would show them actions that you will beat those people. In one narration, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam discussed an incident that happened very shortly before his birth. It was an incident of a young boy with the name Abdullah. And the reason why it was discussed, an indication in this was made in the surah that was read, was Sama Izat al Buruj. It was to show how one child, without the support of anyone, was able to move a nation. How one child, without the support of anyone, he did not have his parents' support, he did not have environment support, and he was always also given the chance to be the blue-eyed boy, meaning the world was put in front of him. It was not that he was kicked out and he had to make something happen. The world was put in front of him. There was no father or mother who told him, forget the world. He walked a pathway, he alone was making decisions and Allah was guiding him. And in his few years, he was able to move an entire nation. He passed away as a martyr. His entire nation around him passed away as martyrs. He died with a smile. The people who were affected with him, a fire was lit. The king said to the people, enter into the fire if you don't want to listen to me. Happily, people walked in the fire. It was all because of one boy who was happy to die for Allah. When it was mentioned, there was an indication that in my ummah, Almighty Allah will create those Abdullahs. They will be that small boys. They will have the world in front of them. Their parents will also be encouraging them in one direction. And then one call will come from Almighty Allah and the whole thing will change. And the issue is called the challenges facing the youth. This was a challenge that faced youngsters in every era. Because when the devil makes his call, when we were small there was a story called the Pied Piper of Hamlet. So there were rats in those towns. And to get rid of the rats, finally they found someone with a flute. He could play a certain tune. But he said to them, you will have to pay me so much of money. Then I will take all the rats out of the town. So they agreed on the price, which was very high for them, but who can live with rats? So he played his tune and he took all the rats, they followed him. He brought them to a certain point by the waters, and as he played it, they all started jumping over. And everything went in the waters, nice story. Now when he came back to get his pay, they were said that, we're not going to pay so much, get lost. So then he said that I got such a flute that my one song can pull rats and my other song can pull children. How the rats went wild for me, the children will go wild for me. And he began playing his song. And the children came out of the houses. Even if the mothers and fathers said, don't go. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in the era of the jal. 
The father will lock up his daughter, his son. He will even lock up his own wife. But somehow they will find a way to still escape and go out. Late at night. What will be calling them? The flute of the devil. He played his tune. The children came out. And they just began following. It's called blind following. Blind following. If you look in the world today, you will see something called blind following. It's called a cult. They don't know why they're doing it. Someone is telling them, cut yourself. But girl, that boy is just cutting. They feel pain. They're feeling the pain. When the father finds the child, he finds bruises everywhere, cuts everywhere. Say, why are you doing it? Say, when I cut, my pain goes away. That I'm burning with pain inside. What pain you got? Said I'm angry with the world. I'm angry with my parents. I'm angry with the teacher. So now to take out that pain, someone, who that someone is, who he met, how he met, someone played that tune and told him, take a blade and cut your hand. And he cut. He began bleeding and he said, pain is coming out. They began blind following and he took them right to the edge of the waters and as he played it, child after child, everyone just jumped. There would be no difference whether it was Muslim child, non-Muslim child, everyone went. But in that story, they never have one thing. They said, all the children fell. That's the story of the Jan. All the children. Had we had the chance to rewrite that story, we would have written, except a few. Except a few because Almighty Allah in Quran, whenever the devil said, I will grab them all, then he himself admitted and Almighty Allah would sometimes say, accept. That there will always be that small group will be mine. May Allah Tabarukala make it every child who is listening to this program becomes that. As that five piper plays his tune and everyone is going, Almighty Allah made it, there will always be an Abdullah who will just stop and turn. He will become deaf from the music that makes everyone else wild. What turns somebody else on turns him off. Where other people, they pay to go to the club. This Abdullah will be threatened, if you don't go to the club, I will hit you. His friends mock at him. He say, are you okay? Are you not going? Where one person, his father is saying, do you really want to go? He say, daddy, I must go. This Abdullah is such, his father is telling him, you must go. He say, daddy, I'll never go. There will always be that Abdullah. But who will be? Allah subhanahu has a system, whoever puts his hand up and says, I want to be it. Almighty Allah then says, no problem, I'll make you that. But you have to be ready to put up your hands. And the father and the mother must be ready to look at the child and say, Allah, make this child different. So in the era of this Abdullah, the king was ruling. And every king has his magician. Magic has always grabbed the attention of the world. Something different. Something somebody else hasn't got. I got that bird that flies in the houses and comes back and tells me what's happening. I got my jinn that's playing on my fingers. I am able to do certain tricks that everyone asks, how you did it? I'm a magician. Everyone got magicians. The king had a magician. The magician was old. He said that if I have to die now, this knowledge that I got, who will I give it? So he said, let's have a competition where the youngsters of this area come. And they had to do certain things for one boy, this Abdullah was chosen. He won. So he had the world in front of him. He was chosen to become the magician of the king. He would not have to worry about wealth, about house, about anything. You are standing next to the king, you are more powerful than the king. One Abdullah. Abdullah's mother and father, why they sent him for this? Because every parent has a desire that at the time where we are living, 
whatever is known as the thing, my child must be the best in that. So his mother and father, in their era, magic was the best. In our era, to be an engineer, to be a scientist, to be creating the rocket, to be a person who is making money that you can never imagine. Imam Ghazali, rahimullah, one place wrote, in his era to be a judge, a Muslim judge was the best, because he earned the most. And to be a doctor in his era was not liked at all, because the doctors would not charge. So the doctor was giving service. No one wanted to become a doctor. Imam Ghazali, rahimullah, wrote, why everyone wants to be a judge? Is there really sincerity in this? Why is it that the amount I earn is making me make decisions? He wrote, why aren't people not becoming doctors? Just because the doctor doesn't earn what the judge earns. We enter an era where whenever a decision is made for a child, 90% of the time the parent's eye is on what he is going to earn in this profession. May Allah make us those parents that ourselves we tell the child, you only got one life. How much of benefit you can be to mankind, do it. And after that you will enjoy forever and ever. But very few parents will say this. النُصْحُوا لِكُلِّ Muslim. A Sahabi radiallahu said, I want to take bayat, pledge allegiance. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Will you take this pledge, make this promise to me? You will be a well-wisher for everyone. The Sahabi radiallahu alayhi wa said, I will. What a pledge. He would do business after that. In his business, someone would come to buy, or he would go to buy. The person wants to sell the item, he will say, it's too cheap. The whole world is opposite. We go to the shop, the man got a price, I tell him it's too expensive. I say, give a discount, make it less, make it less. The sahabi was the opposite. He went in, it already had a marked price. He said, how can you sell this cloth at this price, I will pay more. Which man won't take more? He said, will you sell it to me at double its price? He would sometimes even triple the price. He would ask him, why are you doing this? He said, I made a promise to the Rasul of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that in this world I will be desirous of good for every believer. When I saw the value of this thing, I had to say, he is worthy of this. How can I take it less? It's a very high level. For a parent to tell his child, you only got one life. Whatever you are going to do in life, do it for the benefit of mankind. Man ahya fakannama ahya nas jamia. That one person who saved one person's life, Almighty Allah says, we will treat him as though he saved mankind. He will stand on that day as a savior of humanity. The child wants to become a doctor. Immediately the parent show tells him it's not the salary. It is a nusuli kulli Muslim that there will be many sick people in the world who will have no money. From now make an intention, Allah, if I become a doctor, I will never charge the one who hasn't got money to pay. Why? Because a man in distress, between him and the arsh of Allah, there's no barriers. So the father tells the child, I want you to get the du'as of all the people who are weak. How will I get it? He said, you must not charge. Become a doctor. Now you become a doctor. He said, I want you to become a mechanic. He says, for what? Not that how much he earns. He says, there will be men who don't have the money to put them back on the road. He said, oh my son, when everyone else is charging high prices, I want you to be the one putting them on the road for a very low price. When that man who hasn't got money in his wallet, he sees your bell and his dua comes out, he says, you created for that, to have that father. So in that era, that father and mother wanted the child to be a magician. 
In this era, every father and mother, their desire is, my child must excel. But the demand of Iman is, my child must excel there. And for him to excel, her to excel there in the year after, first sabak that must be given to a child, be the khair kha, be desirous of good for every believer. That child will never mock. That child will feel bad when somebody else is mocked. That child will never knock someone down. That child will pick up people. Because that child grows up with a lesson that your father and mother's desire in life is to see you desirous of goodness for everyone around you. You must not be the one holding back, you must be the one taking out. You must not be the one laughing, you must be the one making others smile. You must not be the one making someone cry, you must be the one giving the tissue. When that child grows up, but every child is not going to have that parent who is going to put him on this way. This Abdullah never had that parent. His father and mother only wanted him to be a magician. Abdullah leaves his house to go study. On the way Allah Tabarakallah's call comes. This is called the divine call. That there will be an Abdullah in every era, even if his parents don't want him to be the Abdullah. As Abdullah walks, he passes by one man. This is a pious individual on the madhab religion of Nabi Isa a.s. But he has to be in hiding. If the king finds out, he will be murdered. The environment doesn't accept him. He is calling towards something which everyone else is not accepting. So in a small bush, Abdullah passes. The question was, how did Abdullah manage to find him? Did he go out and put a board? Did he send a WhatsApp? Did he come on the road and say, come in my bush? How did Abdullah find him? The answer is when Allah Taala wants someone to be an Abdullah, Almighty Allah pulls him like how he pulled Musa Alayhi That you don't go looking, it comes looking for you. Some boys in our madrasa, they come from other countries. We sometimes sit with them and ask that who introduced you to Darulum Azad? Some of those boys, no one introduced them. They were getting the best results, best results. And sitting in front of the computer, one thought comes in front of them. That I want to become a man who understands Quran. Then he presses on his computer. Where can I study? Normally on the computer, whenever you look for good, evil normally comes. It's very hard to find good on a computer. How he finds Darul Ulum Azad, well, we still can't understand. But he finds, he says, I like this one. As it is, our madrasa website is not the smartest website in the world. Sometimes I think it doesn't even work. But that day, how it looked, and he said, I fell in love with the madrasa. I looked at the picture, I said, nothing to fall in love, really. You're seeing one water place, but there's no water in it. That's what it is. He fell in love with it. How he made his parents agree to send him to the scary South Africa. In those countries, they're scared of the worst South Africa also. Because they hear only that you get killed as soon as you come out of your house. Normally, any country I go, the first thing they ask, like, how you survive? They think everyone dies. But for that parent to decide to send that child, that is called the call of Allah to an Abdullah. That call will continue coming. Sometimes me and you have to say, Allah, will you make me that Abdullah? Will you make me that Amatullah? I want to be that one. Then even if the environment is against you, you will not be able except to find the man in the bush also. If that madrasa is in a small hedge, you will walk into the madrasa. If the madrasa is found on the outskirts of the town, you will go there looking for it. Guidance will pull you wherever you are. If that call of Allah is, I want you to be my Abdullah. He gets stuck with this man. The man reads to him something, he's thrilled. Then he says, hey, I have to go for my lesson. Quickly he goes, he comes, the magician says, you late. 
He doesn't know what to say. The magician hits him. He thinks hiding is something no one likes. Being punished is something no one likes. But Abdullah will not say, that man let me get hiding. How the world is today, a shaitani world, we creates in a child the thought that if anything is wrong in your life, it's because someone hit you, someone laughed at you, someone mocked you. So the devil blows that thought. And the child becomes angry with everyone except the devil. Then the devil blows another thought, let's take revenge. Let's make your parents cry. Let's make the people understand how much pain I'm... Same devil. It was the very devil who made people hurt me. And it's the very devil who says to me, take revenge. Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam was that small boy. The devil blew in the ears of his brothers, get rid of him. They hit him. They lowered him into a well. He was separated from his father. Years later, his brothers come in front of him. Yusuf alayhi salam taught the Abdullahs of this ummah. That don't listen to the blow of the devil. A believing boy and girl doesn't take revenge. We don't have the fear I have to make them feel my pain. Yusuf alayhi salam's brothers come in front of him. Their heads are down. They say, is it really you our brother? Then they just look disgraced, ashamed. They remember what they did to him. Yusuf alayhi salam said, Shaitan tried to make a barrier between me and you. He said, La tasriba alaykum al yawm. Today we will not even discuss what happened. He said, oh my brothers, may Allah forgive all of you. He said, you enjoy what you're seeing, I'm on the throne of Egypt. He said, I want to be happy, what makes me happy is to see you happy. This is what he's called an Abdullah of the Summa. What makes me happy is to see you happy. He said, go back to our land, Canaan, and come with all your family. You go and bring your wife and children, your wife and children, your wife and children. I will bring you all into Egypt. I will build for all of you all. Who you are saying? To the one who the devil would have said to him, this is the very one who hurt you when you were young. Now is the time of revenge. But the children of this ummah, our stars are the anbiya of the past. We don't have this thing, I will show my point. I will commit suicide. I will make them understand what they did to me. Sometimes the father got angry, he gave one smack. My other cousins were there, they saw it. I ran in the room, I started crying, I said, how could my father hit me in front of them all? Worse is, if that girl next door was there, and she saw it, how am I going to face her tomorrow? Now I cry, I cry, as I'm crying, as I'm crying, the thought comes to me. That who he thinks he is. Just like that he could hit me. One day I'll show him. One day. That's the devil. Me and you, we got a star in front of us. Yusuf Alisa. That one day when I'm sitting on the throne of the world also, what will make me happy will be to see the people in front of me happy. And nusuli kulli Muslim. The one who did me down, I want to put him up. The one who pelted me in Taif, I want him to get Islam and take it in the world. The one who was mocking me yesterday, Abu Jahl's son, Abu Jahl has been killed. Abu Jahl is killed in Badr. His son Ikrama remains fighting against Islam until the conquest of Makkah Mukarrama. Nabi Sallallahu enters, Ikrama knows I am the son of Abu Jahl. Just my father's name means death for me. And then my fighting so many years, he runs. Ikrama runs. His wife, Allah Tabarakullah puts it in her heart, where are you going to run? She comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in niqab. And then she says that, if someone has to come at your door, will you have forgiveness for that person? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if the person comes asking, we will forgive. She says, anyone, say anyone. Say, what about Ikrama? 
And Allah's Nabi Wasallam said, Ivan Ikrama. Now she goes out. Where is my husband? He's gone. It's a long story. Finally she finds him. She said, I got a promise from the Rasul of Allah. Come back. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam informs Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Ikrama is coming. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam says to his companions, Ikrama, the son of Abu Jal, is going to walk in. When he walks in, I do not want one person to look at him with an angry eye. That you come in. This is, this is our stars. We are different. We are the ones who forgive and it starts when we are young. All this what the shaitani world is putting anger, revenge, show my point, show the world who I am. We are a different nation. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was eating. He was the king of the world. One person came and looked at him, saw him how he was sitting, how he was eating. He said, you eat like a slave. The slaves eat like us. Meaning the kings, we bosses, we sit, we enjoy. Said you like a slave. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I am a slave. Said I am a slave, I am the slave of my Allah. I sit like a slave, I eat like a slave. Our star is different. Our walk is different. We walk with a humble walk because my Allah likes that walk. My hairstyle is different. Why have you taken this hairstyle? Every boy normally loves hair. In our madrasa we know it. When we want to punish a boy, we just tell him, cut your hair and he sees that crying. Why is it that when a person goes for hajj and umrah, that same boy, there's one student in our madrasa, how many times I told him, cut your hair. It was exam time, he's not cutting his hair. I'm telling him, you know what, the madrasa loved you so many years. Now you write at the ending, now just because you got married, now you don't want to cut your hair. Just cut the hair. I told him, if your wife loves you, she'll love you, bless also. Cut your hair, he never cuts. Then we had to tell him, you won't be allowed to write the exam. Then he went and cut short. But when I went for Umrah, I saw him bless. So I told you, only one thing could make you cut your hair, it's Allah's command. Otherwise, we were not going to get that hair out. But what made him cut the hair? That hair he loved so much. But because he knew at the present moment, my Allah wants me to be blessed. He was happy for that also. Happy for that. Cut it. What he couldn't do, but there was happiness because my Allah. This is our walk. How my hairstyle will be is what makes my Allah happy. What my dress will be is what makes my Allah happy. And when she says, why are you looking like this? There was one boy, he was in his matzik or university, whatever it was. We were in Pakistan at that time, Hazrat Shah Hakim Muhammad Akhtar Sahib. So this boy now came in the gathering, not because he wanted to make Toba. He was a boy in what we call varsity. He came because he and his girlfriend had a problem. Like how you always have. The girl is always so sweet until you get close to her. Then Hashan comes out. So for some reason there was a fight and in his exams or in his year, over the year you prepare your reports or whatever and you keep it in your file and at the end of that year this is your entire like work of the year, your file. And then this gets submitted and you get your mark. So right near the ending now, because of the fight that happened, she stole his fight. She stole. These girls, you can never trust them. Give your heart to them, they'll take the heart. They won't give you back. But she took his fight. Now he needs that file. She wants him to beg. He needs that file because he can't submit. That whole year can go wasted. She's not bothered. Let it get wasted. So now someone told him that there's a great chef, he gives Taoist. So he thought that if some Taoist at one, some maybe a jinn can go pull it out, whatever it was, he came there now in the gathering. And in a very sad story, he started mentioning his, what's happening. Hazrat Rakim Sahib was a very jolly person. So he just started laughing. This boy is like half crying with his story, he started laughing. Like, so, so he was shocked, like he never knew ulama laugh. So that was the first, like... 
And then, so as the I told him, I'll make dua, inshallah, you'll get your file back, but you carry on coming. And few times he came here to tell his story to everyone. And then everyone makes like, Ameen for him, Allah give you a file, and everyone laughs. So as that was happening, he began enjoying the environment. He began enjoying. And his mind went away from his school, from his worries, from her. He should just come and say, I sit here and all my like, concern goes away. I'm enjoying it here. And in a very short while we saw like a revolution took place. This is what Abdullah said. Revolution. He learned few bayans in that few days also. Now he started, so the first hair that came out now he's supposed to shave it. But now he decided I'm not going to shave. I'm going to keep a beard. So because that first few hairs came, that girl from far noticed it. While he's in his varsity, she noticed hair. So because she's like the girlfriend. So she wasn't coming in front of him, suddenly she comes one day and she's very upset. She's very upset, why are you looking so ugly? She's not giving him his book, but she's worried about that hair, like how dare you not cutting that hair. So he gave her a bayan about how important the beard is. So her, like, where does bayan, like, where you became sheikh of the time? So he gave her a bayan, like, hi, I can't cut this beard. She was very upset, like, very upset. So one of the things he said to her is that, my beloved does not like that I cut it. And she could not believe there's another beloved over her, like. She became jealous of Allah. That who is this one? Like, I want you to cut it. And he said, my beloved doesn't want me to cut it. And he was just carrying on like this. Yeah. And then the best part was when one day he came in the Khanka and he was like thrilled. He said, I won, I won. And I said, Akim Sahas, what do you mean you won? She said, today she came to me. And she said, are you still not going to cut this beard? And while I was looking down, because now you was taught to look down, you mustn't look at her eye. While I was looking down, he said, I noticed in her hand, she had her file. <laughs> she had her file. So he did something and he grabbed the file. And he ran. And she's chasing him now. So then he put the file now and now the phone calls are carrying on. I want my file. And he said, I want my file. <laughs> so he said, finally now the sula had to take place with the in-between where hand over of the files. So he got his file. After he got his file, so she asked him one question. That, okay, you won, you got what you want. Will you cut your beard now? There also she still worried. So then he said to her that what makes my beloved unhappy, I will never do it after this. And then he said, and this is my last salam to you, don't run behind me. And he turned and that's when he came to the Khanka and he said, I won. Like, I won. Abdullah can win. But our walk is different. Our walk is different. We don't give our heart to the girl in that. We win hearts. We make them connect to Allah. We are different. The girl comes and says, I want your number. And you come back and instead of giving her your number, you give her a translation of Quran. You say, you need this more than my number. I'll keep you busy for two hours at night. My Allah will keep you busy right till the ending. We have to be different. Even if you're not so pious, act the pious. Abdullah went to the magician. The magician hit him. But he never said that man in the bush caused it. He just kept quiet and he got the hiding. Got the hiding. He's Abdullah. Sometimes in life, take the hiding. A great scholar of Islam, he writes about what changed his life. Mr. Sajjad Nomani, who is in South Africa, his father is Mr. Manzoor Nomani. He was a unique scholar of his time. So it was most likely Mr. Manzoor himself who wrote this. That when he was at the beginning parts of his madrasa days, his mind was very weak, because of which his father changed him in the pre-first year of few madrasas. So you go one madrasa, you don't make it pre-first year. Then you go another madrasa, you don't make it. 
So in one of those madrasas it happened that someone, one of his friends did something and the Ustad was very upset. So when the Ustad came, instead of finding out really who was responsible, someone must have just indicated to him and he was a naughty boy. And that's what happens normally. You naughty and the day you get hiding is not when you wrong. So you get very upset. You say, but I was right here. But you say that this hiding you got was for last time. Last time no one hit you. This is the time. One judge, one judge was sitting on top, high on his building. And at the bottom he noticed someone stabbed someone. And after the stabbing took place, somebody else ran to try to help. And while he was trying to save this person, that other person ran away. While he was there, the police came around. So when they came around, they saw one man on top of another man and a knife. And it just happened, he put his hand on the knife also. So the only fingerprints were his. Now there was only one witness, the judge on top. But because he's so far and he's an old judge now, they cannot trust his eyesight. But he saw the thing happen. He saw the running away. So he went to court also to testify. He even mentioned, I saw this here, but they questioned his eyesight and they said, it's not acceptable. So everything points around this person, it happened, this person had an issue with that person, whatever happened, he got jailed. The judge went to go visit him. Just to say to this year that, that I saw really what happened. So I came to tell you that I'm very sorry, I know you're innocent. This man in jail says to the judge that you know everything bounces back once, one day. He says, many, many years ago, I did kill someone. Many years ago, I killed someone. And I always thought that I'll never get caught. He says, when this incident happened and I'm sitting in the court, and I can't believe, like when I was guilty, no one caught me. And when I'm dead innocent, I can't prove my innocence. He says, while I was sitting, I realized the one in the heavens has full justice. He said, you only saw the one, I am being punished for the other one. Sometimes when your father gives you an hard shot, and you think that it wasn't right, this time I did nothing wrong, you must say it was for last time. It was for last time. So he got a hiding when he was not wrong. And normally students, whenever they get hiding when they're not wrong, that's when they want to like fight for our rights. And what the whole world is that now we will fight. So his friend said to him, now go to the principal. This is the chance. This teacher will get fired. We'll bring this teacher down. Go to the principal. And he's thinking about it, that what will happen if I go? Like, the most will happen is the principal will call the teacher, he'll shout him, he might fire him. A family might lose their job. He said, I got the hiding already. The pain is not going to come out. So day and day he sat and he thought about it and he said, what will I get? And just left it. He said he just left it and Allah Taala made his mind stronger by the day. What he was not understanding yesterday, he was now understanding. And then he began excelling in Islamic studies until he became the renowned scholar of his time. What it was, he was different from what the world was asking. We don't hold. So Abdullah came back. As Abdullah was going, he got the hiding already. As he was going, he just couldn't stay away from the bush. He went back to the bush. He looked for that individual. He said, say to me something else. Teach me. The man started teaching. It got a little late. And Abdullah said, hey, my parents. He ran home. He came home. His parents were upset. They hit him. Doubled. Hiding here, hiding there. He had no environment. He told the man after I'm getting a lot of hiding, you know that. So the man said, no problem, what you do, if ever you get late by me, if ever it happens, you're late, then you must just tell the magician, you know, my father today was busy with some work. And I had to help him, help him, and he got late, he's not going to hit you for your father. And if ever you get late this side, just say, the magician today took me out, like, he had extra work, and your father was, oh, like you're learning extra. How that is? Look at our condition, majority, 90%. They telling their father and mother, I'm going for tuition. But we all know where they're going. Like, that father is very happy. Like, he's paying extra. That boy is sitting in the club. 
That father just thinks he's getting extra tuition. But there'll be that 1% or that 10% of this ummah. Where the father says, I'm sending him for more English classes. And then as he's going to the class, he's sitting in the madrasa. He came in the madrasa. I want to learn Quran. I want to learn more. Give me the chance. Try to be that Abdullah. And if ever your child wants to be that Abdullah, we beg parents, don't be the one who stops that Abdullah. My brother Ma Imran wrote one incident of one young boy who when he saw his friends going to the Hills class, he just walked in. He sat at the back, the teacher noticed him. After a while the teacher spoke to him and says, why don't you come and join? He said, I can't read Quran. He said, I'll teach you how to read. He was so happy. He said, how much will it cost? Like he said, no, don't worry. Like, who's your father? He said, my father does, doesn't want me. Here. He said, we won't tell your father. You come. He said, you won't charge me. And that boy started reading and enjoying and enjoying. And then someone said to the father, you know where your son is going? He's going there in that halqa. And that day on the table, the father asked the boy, where are you going? And the boy looked down and he got a hiding, hiding of his life. The table went, the mother was saying, just leave him, just leave him. And the father was hitting him and said, did I not warn you? You stay away from those people. And the boy got hit and hit and hit. But something made the boy go back to the teacher. And the teacher saw all the marks on his face. And the boy said, if my father knows I'm coming, so I can't come. The teacher said, no, you must come, I'll speak to your father. The boy said, he'll hit you also. That's what the teacher said, no, I'll go speak to him, he doesn't understand. And the teacher was like a brave teacher. He writes that he went then to the house. And he knocked at the door. And when that man opened, it was like a giant. Like. He said that man blew in his face. like That filthy blood. That was all. Like. He just grabbed him. He said, I know you. He said, are you messing with my son? And he just brought him front and he blew in his face. like. And told him, I'm warning you. Meaning, I'll kill you if I hear that you're messing with my son. So the teacher then told the boy, it was a long story at the waters, they were walking and he told the boy after that. that. And then he said, life carried on. And he writes that a day came with this one old man walks in the masjid. Years later, old man. And he comes looking for this person. And he sits down by him, makes salam to him, starts crying in front of him. And then he narrates that, you know, many, many years ago, my son wanted to study by you. He loved you. He loved you. He would do anything for you. I never allowed him. And he says that if somehow or the other you can come now and speak to my son. So this person says, I've got no problem. Like, I'll come speak to your son. What happened? So he says, after that last hiding that I gave you, hit him again after that. Day, because they met at the beach, so hit him again. He said, after that last hiding... He gathered within himself hatred. He became immune to hiding. He became immune. So I would hit him and he would stand up for me. And he would hit back. I would push him to the ground, he would stand up again and he would attack me. He said, this would never happen. He says, and then he began taking drugs, which made him strong also. He says, the time came where he began hitting me and I could not fight back. He says, my son now is bloated, big. And he's like a good for nothing. And when he comes home, me and his mother live in fear. And the amount of times he hits us. He says, but because he had so much of love for you, I'm hoping that if you can just speak to him and bring him back in the salqa. And the sheikh writes that most likely he went after that to speak to the boy, but... The boy now was beyond that age of listening. So he just arrived that when the chance was there, the man pulled him away. He said, don't ever become that barrier. Because one day when you will want to lift the barrier, it will be too late. So Abdullah's father was a barrier. His mother was a barrier. He said, tell him, tell him, we must be that unique group who goes in the halqa. I go looking. A Jamaat doesn't have to come looking for me. I go looking. I find the Jamaat. 
I go to the madrasa. Everyone's going in one direction, I'm going in another direction. If someone says, since when you became pious, we got a different word. We say, I am Abdullah. Abdullah means I am the slave of Allah. Inni Abdullah. This is our class. He said to Rasulullah, you sit like a slave. He said, I am Abdullah. The slave of Allah. Whoever sees you, mocks at you, tells you, how do you dress? Why you put on a turban? You so young. Your hair is supposed to be spiked in the sky. You must have glasses at the back of your head. You must have socks with holes. At the moment it's socks with holes. I'm sure very soon it will be underwear with holes. You wonder like what they get out of it. They get nothing out of it. It's the devil laughs and they do it like. You'll see, you'll go in the shop, you'll see the underwear, what, and in the worst place they'll put that hole also. Worst place. You wonder why are you wearing the thing like But the boy will do it, the girl will do it. Why? Because everyone is doing it. Then they will ask us the question, why are you not doing it? Our answer will be, in me, Abdullah. Verily I am the slave of Allah. And in that one sentence we will say, I am the slave of Allah and think of Rasulullah as he sat with his legs up. And at the same time we'll think of this Abdullah who was between the magician and his parents and he said, I am Abdullah. He continued learning from the magician and learning from the pious man. Environment. Because of environment sometimes the teacher blows a doubt. He also got a doubt. He could not make that final decision. What's right? And that's what happens in schools, especially in universities. Especially when you will do subjects like philosophy. The teacher will be able to blow one thing, that you will start doubting that is it really the truth. That Abdullah was enjoying himself by the pious man. But because he had a magician who was atheist, he also had a doubt. So on one occasion as he comes, one of it was the area where wild animals roamed. So one of a wild animal, perhaps a lion, could have been a tiger, whatever it was, that lion was in that area. And because of which the people are very scared to go. Everyone is, if I move in there, what if it attacks me? And he's looking at the scene and at that moment Abdullah picks up a pebble. And he says, oh Allah, I want to now know what's the truth. So if the deen of the fire of this man is the truth, then kill this animal with this one stone. And then Abdullah throws it. A stone will never kill an animal. But when Allah Taala wants someone to become Abdullah, Allah makes it happen. In this ummah, no matter what doubts the teachers of the world can blow, when Allah calls an Abdullah, Allah will make arrangements to pull that Abdullah out of all doubts. Sometimes a child messages us, emails us, wants to speak to us. They got so much of doubt regarding, is this the truth? So normally for me to take that calls or the emails is very hard. I got a couple of friends, I just say, please phone this boy, speak to the boy. But sometimes what goes in my mind is, Allah, if that boy is your Abdullah, you yourself will pull him out of his doubts. There's no need for us. This Abdullah is going to look at Allah. If ever in your life you find you finding this doubt, because of one teacher's blow, because of one movie's blow, one novel's blow, then you be that Abdullah that say, Oh Allah, if this deen of mine is the truth, show me the sign. And by Allah, there is no kami. There is no shortage of signs. He asked for a sign, Allah gave it to him. You ask Allah, you will see your signs. You will see it in a dream. You will see it when you awake. You will see such a sign that will make you so strong, you will show others the sign also. One Abdullah, he said, Allah, if this is the truth, show it to me now. Don't live in your doubt. Just look to the creator of the heavens and earth and ask him, remove my doubt. This is what is called, be an Abdullah. He threw that stone and the animal, the animal collapsed. The people began walking. 
Some people were talking, that young boy, but for Abdullah it was something else. They were saying, what a young boy, but so strong. For Abdullah he was like jumping with joy, because I know the truth. I know the truth. He went and he told the pious man. Then Abdullah Tawarutala made it, it was not now one miracle, different miracles happened on Abdullah's hand. People who were sick would come to Abdullah, Abdullah was making dua, they were getting better. People who had skin disease were coming, Abdullah was touching, they were getting better. Now the talk of Abdullah is in the town, now the pious man said to him, that you have now reached a level even higher than me. You have now reached a level even higher than me. I will just digress on this one. This is advice for children but more for parents. One ustad of ours, when we were studying in Madrasa, I remember his words, may Allah reward him abundantly. He said, there are those teachers that always when they get the chance to be sitting on the mimbar, like on their dars, masnad, they the teacher, they love to have students, but they do not want any of their students to excel them. That I will be the best in my field and my students will always be but just one under me. And if ever they see their student becoming better, they become angry. He said, you get some teachers like that. He said, and then you get some teachers whose every dua is, Allah make my every student better than me. He said, I am like that day. The Sustad said, I am like that. He said, it thrills me to hear my students read better than me. I get happy. Now a parent also normally says, I love my children. That part we all have. One extra part. Be that parent whose happiness is in seeing the child happy. Be the parent whose happiness is in seeing the child happy. Now every parent will say, I'm that parent. Where well, I don't like to see my child happy. Problem is we do it at the wrong time. When the child is young, now you say, I must make him happy. Give him a phone, give him a car. Now it's the wrong time. Now make him happy by being a friend. But when the time comes is normally when your child gets married. This is the time where sometimes I feel parents become like children. And it's very hard to speak to an old parent, mother and father, that you know you are more immature than your child at the moment. The mother suddenly gets jealous that why my daughter is looking smarter than me. Now she's already 50 year old auntie. Her daughter is supposed to be happy. But now when the daughter is buying the dress, she's upset like. That why are you spending on her? If she's getting a thousand rand dress, I want one and a half thousand. Because at the wedding, everyone must say, hey, you look smart. You can't be that mother. That mother must be at the wedding, everyone must see no one but my daughter. What about me? I must be dirty. Because I must be busy doing the work. But in this world, when people become jealous, now when the child gets married, now the mother says, when we were small, normally you have children. So the father says to his baby, who will have more, mommy or daddy? Now the child, he doesn't know what answer to give. So the child got a top answer nowadays, say Allah. Yes, came over like. And the father also, yes, okay, after Allah. Now that question when he asks the child, it's not a nice question, because what you want the child to do? But it's called playing with the child. Now the child grows up. The parent is grown up. Now the boy gets married. Now the mother and father asking him, who you love more, your wife or us? That's a child question. Then. Now what he has to answer now? And I say, no, you must show us. Next holiday is coming. We want to see you take her on or us. Now that parent supposed to be the one who says, don't you dare take us. Take your wife and go. But the opposite is happening. Where the child has to write and say, my father and mother, if I want to go out for a picnic, they jump in the car. Now if they in the car, 
And after five years when mother asked the child, you still not getting a child. You say, mommy, you will never left me alone. How am I going to get children? So be that parent who looks for the happiness of the child. And be the one who is ready and nusfu li kulli Muslim to sacrifice. And to the child, you have it in your mind already, the day I become big, I will also be the same thing. I will not be stingy. I got one life to love, to benefit everyone else. And in that world that's coming, all the benefit will come to me. Why must I grab it all here? This pious man said to that boy, you have reached a level even higher than me today. He was not upset, he was not jealous, he was thrilled by it. He says, but remember, exams come. This is the next level for every Abdullah, every Amatul. We are in a world which is not Jannah. Because it's not Jannah, difficulties have to come. He said, you reached a level higher than me. He said, Inna ka mubtala. Oh my child, now listen. Allah is going to now take your exam. Sometimes when we are on a road of piety, and things are going well, and then Allah Taala's decision comes that now the exam of Abdullah has come. So there's an accident. The news come home. Mother and father have passed away. Now that young boy is taken, he sees his father's face, the blood is trickling down. Now the auntie wants to cover the face, they don't let him look at the face. Now the boy goes home, now he's sitting in his room, now he sees all his friends, they all coming with their parents. But he got no parent. Now the devil blows one thought in him, why did Allah do this to you? And again he's supposed to become angry with Allah. Then how could you leave me as an orphan? Then why me I had to go through this? Now they have to take him out of his madrasa because there's no one to pay for his studies. Now he has to go live by his other auntie but he doesn't like her so much. Now when he's dead the devil tells him, isn't life terrible? Again the answer will be, Inni Abdullah. I am the slave of my Allah. He said, you reach a level now where exam is going to start, be ready for it. To be an Abdullah in this world when the exam comes, I was reached one town, so while I was making boys, very similar in age, and they said that in COVID they lost their father. So just when he said that already, although it was a while, you could already see the cheer coming back. So I said to that boy, that, do you know why Allah took your father away? So he looked up like, and say, sometimes Allah Taala takes a parent away because Allah wants to make a giant. I said, you know the example of this? The example is Rasulullah Sallallahu For him to be the most unique man the world ever saw, he had to lose his father before he even entered this world. For him to be the most unique the world ever saw, he had to lose his mother just when he needed her the most. Whenever there was someone who he now trusted, Almighty Allah was going to say, now go. He went through stage after stage after stage, wherever he was getting close to someone. Then Allah Taala said, bus now, take him away. He says, why did Allah do it? Because Allah wanted him to be the most unique person the world ever saw. I said to those two boys, maybe Allah wanted you all to be the most unique that the world will see. Both of them looked up and they smiled. They smiled. Which means if you're ready for an exam, then you don't become angry with the creator of the heavens and the earth. But when the exam comes, you look again to him and say, that Allah let me pass in my exam. Now that very Abdullah will come in the room. And there were those girls during COVID. My brother Imran went to one house. The man of the house passed away. The mother passed away. The mother passed away. So when the mother passes away and you go to visit the house now, it's supposed to be the daughters are crying. And there has to be some other woman in the house who's like serving the guests. But when they visited this house, 
who was meeting the guests, the daughters. And the daughters were hugging them and saying, Jazakallah for coming here, have something to drink. Please have something to drink. Now they're looking at those young girls, where you're all supposed to be crying in the other room. But those girls understand that my father can't entertain the woman. So we'll entertain them. Say, Jazakallah for coming, make dua for my mother, you yeah, have something, please have something. When I heard that, I said, one person, when they see death, they, they themselves die. And another person, even in death, can be smiling. Be that Abdullah, that you come out of the room, when an exam comes. And everyone around you is telling you, Ish, what a problem happened in your house. And you must say, Allah makes the decisions. Be that small Abdullah who says, Allah makes the decisions. That you leave all the big people shocked. This is what is called the Kamal of this Ummah. There will be those youngsters, girls and boys, who when everyone expects you to cry, you come out laughing. When everyone will say, how could this happen? You will say, nothing happens without the decision of Allah. There will definitely be some wisdom in it and you remain smiling. The pious man said, you're going to be tested. Abdullah was ready for the test. The minister of the king was blind. He got the message that there's a boy. If he rubs his hand over you, your sight comes back. He comes. He says, I heard that you can treat the blind. He said, Allah is the one that treats. But if you are ready to believe in my Allah, I'll make dua that Allah cures you. The man says, I will be ready. He makes dua. The minister goes back. The king sees a minister. Who's... He says, since when you are a man of sight, where did your eyesight come? He says, my Allah sent it back. My Rabb. The king says, do you have a Rabb besides me? The minister says, actually it's my Rabb. Not only my Rabb, it's your Rabb also. And the king becomes irritated, upset. He grabs him. He has his people hit him. Finally, as they torturing, torturing, then he has to say that it was this boy. They go torturing, then the boy has to say this pious man. All of them are brought. It's a very long incident. The minister is told, leave the space. He said, I'll never leave it. They take that saw. They could have killed him and then cut him. Like how it happened in recent times. When you to cut a person, you can kill and then cut, but they cut before killing. They enjoy that for whatever reason. See the man scream. In front of that young Abdullah, they're cutting a man. They cut him, but he's not going to leave his faith. Then the pious man is brought, they tell him, leave the faith in front of Abdullah. But Abdullah is Abdullah. He is also waiting to be cut. Different from the people of the world. When everyone is running to say, I want to love and Abdullah is the one who says, I want to die for Allah. Everyone runs away from death and Abdullah is the one who goes running towards death. They said, the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they heard a loud bang in Medina Munawwara. It was dark. Group of them got together. What's happening? Maybe there's an attack. They gathered their weapons, they jumped on their horses, they started going out. As they're going out, Rasulullah is returning. He says, don't worry, I already went to go check, there's nothing. He says, this was the Nabi of Allah. Before even they could even go out, Allah's Nabi was gone. Nabi Wasallam spoke about who is the best of people. He said, it is that individual who gets onto his animal. And he goes running, searching for a place where people say, you'll die here. And he says, that's the place I'm looking for. I want my life to be given from Allah. People in the past did it. May Allah make it that we become those Abdullahs. We are on the verge of what is known as the time when the flags of Islam will start rising. As those flags start rising, there will be soldiers who will be needed to take up that flag. Those soldiers have to be such that they love to die. If you go to Istanbul, and on the train as you are moving, you reach one place, they say the name of the town. So when I heard that name, I thought of this. The town is named after one individual. 
When they needed to conquer the fort, they needed people to run, so a hole was made in the fort. Now that hole is made, you need people to run through that hole. But on the other side, the enemy are shooting arrows and they throw in boiling water. But this Sultan Fatih Muhammad got such a jamaat of boys. Every one of them is desirous not to live to die. So each one comes to say, I want to be of the first, first jamaat. That I will run into the arrows. So that the second jamaat can get into the fort and I'll take all the arrows. One had the flag, this individual, who they named the town after. His desire was the flag has to reach the top. While he's running in behind this group, he's not interested in fighting. You can throw what arrows you want. You can hit me with your swords. My desire is the flag has to go to the top. So he's just running past the enemies and he's getting an arrow on this side, an arrow on that side. His desire is to get to the top. He reaches the top. And as he plants that flag, so many arrows are in his body bleeding. He falls with the flag. When they find him, they find a man with the flag and he's like in such the position. Dead. His desire was to die, but the flag must go on top. In our future, we might see the day where the lifting of the flag has to happen. Those individuals will be lifting it up who today can say, Allah, I am that Abdullah. That I am not scared to die for you. If it means me running towards the army, running into the fire, running towards the bullet, when Abdullah did it in the past, I want to be the Abdullah. He looked at the person getting cut. Second person getting cut. It never made him scared because I'm waiting to be cut. I'm Abdullah. The, first. the king saw him happy. King said, I won't just kill you so easy. And then the king sent him to the mountain, said, take him to the mountain and throw him. It never worked. He came back. Then the king sent him in the water, said, drown this boy. It never worked. Others drowned. He came back. Finally, Abdullah says to the king that you want to kill me? Come, I'll tell you how to kill me. This was the end of this Abdullah. He wanted to die. Imagine he's telling the king, I'll tell you how to kill me. He said, in one plane I will stand, I'll give you my arrow also. You must pull it, no soldier, you must pull it. The king is so upset, irritated with him, the king said, I'll pull it. He says, but when you're pulling it, you'll have to say these words, I will teach you in the name of the rub of this boy. In the name of the creator of this boy and then let go. And Abdullah stands so calm, so calm, he gave a message to all of us, be an Abdullah. Don't be scared to die. He just stood, and that arrow hit him. He just hit him by his temple, he put his finger there, and he fell down. Years later, in the time of Umar, radiallahu anh, they were going to open a grave. In the grave, they were going to find one young boy with his finger here. The man who found it moved the finger. He moved the finger, blood started coming out. Fresh. They left the finger, the finger went back. They wrote to Umar radiallahu and he said, this is that Abdullah. This is that Abdullah. He said, now bury him somewhere where no one knows. Waiting to move his finger in front of Allah one day. That the blood has, how he died. As he fell, so unique was his death. Everyone who came to see the the king brought them to tell them, see what will happen who doesn't listen to me. Allah subhanahu in one Abdullah sacrifice put such hidayat amongst them. Everyone read kalima. The soldiers came and said to the king, what you never want to happen has gone wild. Then the king said, dig in front of the houses. Light the fires. This is the surah. Ashabul ukhdud. Light the fires. Go house to house and tell the people, either the religion of the king or the fire. As they would say that people were walking in the fire. Abdullah died happy, everyone was dying happy. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one woman only took a step back. Because she had a child who was drinking milk. The heat of the fire, the love of the child. He said, miraculous, the child stopped drinking milk. 
The child looks at the mother at an age where a child can't speak. And the child says, Oh my beloved mother, indeed you are on the truth to make sabr. And then the child grabs again and then the mother with the child walks in the fire. If you can understand that whole scene, but why? It was his honor that if someone in the past could create an Abdullah like this, I being the final Nabi of Allah, in my ummah, Allah will definitely create for me such Abdullahs. May Allah tabarukullah make every one of us those Abdullahs. You are an Abdullah, you are an Amatullah, we are the slave of Allah. We have come to benefit the entire mankind, to benefit them in worldly things, and to benefit them taking them to Allah. We have to give so much of benefit to the world, that that thing which is the most scary death, it becomes thrilling for me to die for Allah. And I am able to make it a thrill for everyone around me. That if the enemy says die, the people say I'm ready to die for Allah. May Allah tabarakallah make us all of those Abdullahs. The shaitani world will challenge how much he wants to challenge. They will always be an Abdullah. May me and you become that Abdullah. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi